speaking of dirty money, here's another case. A few years back, a meme was going viral on social media. It was mostly a Dubai thing. People living there would show off their life. Great cars, great houses, and great clothes. In the end, would come a signature sign-off. They would say, Habibi, come to Dubai. I guess it worked. Because that's exactly what has happened. A data leak shows that a lot of people did go to Dubai. Politicians, businessmen, sanctioned oligarchs, celebrities, defense contractors, even terror financiers. All of them have bought property in Dubai. How do we know this? Thanks to a data leak from the UAE, it covers a time period between 2020 and 2022. The data was shared with a Norwegian media outlet. They, in turn, collaborated with 70-plus news agencies, and together, they produced this, Dubai Unlocked. Let's meet some of the notorious residents. Obeid Khanani was a prop has a property in Palm Jumeirah. He's a Pakistani national sanctioned by the U.S. in 2016 for laundering money for drug cartels and gangs. Another resident is Joseph Johannes Lydeckers, a.k.a. Chubby Joes. Don't fall for the cute nickname, though. Dutch authorities say he's a major player in the global cocaine trade. A third example is Salam Shebani. He once featured in Europe's most wanted list. Today, he's in a Swedish prison. The charges range from murder to fraud. Amid all of this, you have Pakistani politicians. Former President Parvez Musharraf had property in Dubai. So does the current President Asif Ali Zardari. Three of his children have houses in Dubai. Bilawal Bhutto, the former Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Bakhtawar Bhutto and Asifa Bhutto. Two of them are members of Pakistan's parliament. So you can imagine the reaction. Questions are being asked of the Bhuttos. Did they buy this property to evade taxes? And if so, they're not alone. There are 17,000 Pakistani owners in Dubai. Put together, they own 23,000 properties. Pakistan is second on the list of foreign owners. And guess who's first? Indians. There are more than 29,000 Indian owners in Dubai. They own 35,000 properties. Put together, it's worth almost $17 billion. Among them is Nirav Modi, the fugitive Indian businessman. He owns three properties in Dubai. Now, all of this raises a couple of questions. One, why Dubai? And two, why criminals and drug lords? Both answers are linked to each other. Real estate is a key part of Dubai's economy. It makes up almost 9% of their economy. Dubai is expected to deliver more than 34,000 houses this year, so the supply is huge. Chances are foreigners will snap up most of it. And a big reason for that is taxes. The UAE doesn't have any. If you live in Dubai, you don't have to pay income tax. So a lot of people stash their money there, away from the tax man. Plus, the UAE does not impose Western sanctions. Say you're a Russian oligarch or a sanctioned African businessman. You can't invest in Europe. You can't invest in North America, but you can invest in the UAE. Until recently, they had very few extradition treaties. So it's the ideal place to lie low, far away from Western law enforcement. And finally, the buying process is quite simple. Paying in cryptocurrency, no problem. Paying in bags of cash, again, no problem. The Dubai property regulators are quite lenient. They don't bother with background checks, it seems. Also, once you buy, your records are safe. Only a leak like this one will reveal your purchase. So Dubai checks all the boxes for a shady buyer. Secrecy, lack of background checks, no taxes, no Western sanctions, and the warm West Asian sun. I know the idea of drug lords bathing in the Dubai sun is borderline funny, but it's also risky. We're talking about dangerous people. Shouldn't Dubai be cracking down on them? Well, they say they are. The UAE says they are cracking down. One official, in fact, has rubbished this leak, leaked report. He said the UAE takes the integrity of the global economy very seriously. So questions must also be asked of the watchdogs. One of them is the FATF, the Financial Action Task Force. In February, they removed the UAE from their grey list. But months later, this report emerges. Not a good look, is it? Especially for a country like the UAE, they have big plans lined up. They want to be a financial and technological hub. But for that, you must also be transparent. The UAE will have to come clean about these leaks. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. South Africa goes to the polls on the 29th of May. I will track the election and bring you ground reports. 
is at the end of the road for the African National Congress and will former President Jacob Zuma stage a dramatic comeback? From elections to climate change to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.